Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for December 20 or December 2nd of 2022. Still waking up here today. It's almost like a wintry day out. Um, gosh, appreciate you all for being here this morning that are here live. And if you are here live, you're welcome to drop your uh, questions here on the questions tab, if you will. Um, otherwise, the chat side is great place to connect with others here um let's see and if you um if you are watching this on youtube you're welcome to sign up for the newsletter to come in live where you can ask questions live or send an email to info at twistedsage.com all right hey renard so as usual we have some phenomenal people from all over the planet and again, thank you guys for being here live. Um, so let's see. Oh, crud, I left the calendar in my car. So we have our calendars now. Um, the calendars are pretty fantastic. They're they're beautiful, they're energetic. Um, you know, it's like a it's like those coupon books that the kids sell for fundraisers at school. Um, but usually those coupon books that cost you like 80 bucks, they, you don't end up spending anything out of there because the coupons are usually like buy this item that you don't need and you get 20% off. Well, I feel like we've done a good job at picking the tools for like the buy one, get one 50% off like the Gaia spheres. Um, gosh, I don't even remember what all is on the calendar for buy one, get one 50% off. And then we also have um, the regular coupon codes there to the monthly ones um, that only the calendar holders get. But what's really cool about the calendar is, is that there's a free monthly tool with a $10 minimum purchase. So like this first month um, in January, the tool you get is actually the, the mini wisdom wand with the clasp, um, not the pendant, but the, the smaller version of this one. Um, so it's a pretty phenomenal um, tool that you get for, you know, just making that minimum purchase. And then every month you get, you know, a new tool of the month. And, um, let's see, there's like the water alchemy ring. There's gosh, there is 12 great products that are available. Um, so it's like, a sorry, it's my sales pitch. It's like a $455 savings just on the free tools. Plus, you get like over a thousand dollars worth of coupon savings. If you do buy a lot of tools, the calendars are great. They're also great gift items and they are 79 bucks all the way up until January 1st. So we have a limited number. So just trying to push those out the door because we did a lot of work on getting those together. Hey, Valerie from Colorado, Christine from Oz. Yeah, sorry, I feel a little under the weather this morning, but you know what? We will get to some questions here. Um, our first question we have is from the internet. And actually, let's go ahead and drop into the heart space first and create this energetic container. So just putting your attention to the physical heart and putting your attention to the heart of the earth that beautiful crystal sun within the earth and you just breathe in that energy of the earth up through the feet into the body into your world into the heart if you tangibly connect heart to heart with the earth she has so much support in space of transformation for you. She starts to just draw off any of the dense energies that no longer serve you as she is a powerful, powerful transformer and co-creator with us. And she is happy to do this in service. So as you are connecting with the earth, just allow things to just flow. And next we find our light, us as creator God, our light that is always in the heart. It is always with us. 
So just if you need to pretend to go outside of you to find it, then let's pretend that there is you that is this giant sun, a central sun in all of creation. And this is you. And all of creation is also you. And you breathe in that light, bring in that connection fully into the heart. That facet of your soul. Or perhaps it is your entire soul. Just bring in that light to your awareness, expanding that out of the heart into every cell of the body and into your life. So that third breath is connecting earth and creation, you, at the same time, bringing that into the here now, where you're grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right. Yeah, almost feels like the calm before the storm today, huh? Okay, so I have first question here. Um, the first question, and this is from the internet, and again, you're welcome to sign up for our newsletter, just the bottom of the twistedsage.com, and we'll send you out the, the announcements when we do 50 Questions Friday, and you can simply reply to that email with your question if you wish. What are your thoughts or experience about using the Betar coil with ring, <laughs> tensor field generators, alchemist sets, with the Spooky 2 generators for remote or Spooky 2 Scalar. So basically the, the Spooky 2 is a frequency emitting device. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool little machine. Basically you hook it up to your computer and you use their free program. And the Spooky 2 is a little box that has a transmitter on it. And it's kind of like radionics, but you are transmitting frequencies. It's, or it could be you know, you might liken it to a Rife machine, but it doesn't use the exact same frequencies as Rife does. Um, I believe you can run Rife through it. But anyway, so it's a frequency device, um, electronic. And so we suggest using the tensor rings um, either on the antenna. Uh, and the antenna is simply this little box where you usually put like fingernail clippings or hair sample, which is just basically the whole quantum entanglement idea. Spooky, spooky at a distance is, um, you know, that was Einstein's whole saying with quantum entanglement. And so basically with the, uh, the antenna, you'll put a person's fingerprint or fingernail there. And then that antenna is then broadcasting to that person through quantum entanglement. You can also simply do it through intention. Um, but with that antenna, you can use the beta coils because it's going to bring a much higher potential of, of work, of the healing light, of the space, of that coherent space. It brings higher potentials within that space to the person you're broadcasting from. You can also use, um, as the person mentioned, they have the Alchema set of rings. And again, you can use it on the antenna of any of these um, frequency broadcasting devices or you can put it directly onto the unit itself. This also includes music. We have somebody who spends a lot of money on tools and he uses these in, um, in all of his electronics for sound. And so he uses digital sound and I'm assuming it's used for healing work. And so he places tools on different, um, different units, not only just the speakers, but also the amplifiers, everything within the sound unit. And so basically when you put a ring or the Vedar coil anywhere on these electric units, it is working throughout the whole unit. So, you know, it used to be that the Vedar coils were used originally designed to work with speakers so that you were working with the actual physical fields of sound and to amplify those. Well, we also see that tensor rings around any physical sound creation device, whether it is a singing bowl or um, speakers or a person's voice, that it harmonizes those fields. It can change the color of sound. So using um, 
using these tools on any kind of energy emitting frequency emitting device anywhere on the antenna or the machine is absolutely perfect um the spooky two is um you know a, again it's just another broadcasting device that it harmonizes and amplifies the frequencies that are being put out whether they are in the audible sound whether they are in more in the frequencies of light or beyond our um, perception so renard with the healy device too um yes actually our good friend marty lucas also promotes the healy's and he promotes our rings and he's the our, our great radionics friend um and so you know from my understanding using the healy's along with the tensor ring also amplifies the effects they amplify each other <clears throat> So, um, you know, and I have not experienced that myself to, to, to say my experience, but I just know that any kind of frequency emitting device, sound, color, light, it is, it amplifies within the field of the tensor rings. Um, the tensor rings act like a carrier wave. So they're, they're a field that whatever you're putting in there, not only is it harmonizing it, but it allows it to amplify. So let's see, going back here. Hey, David from the UK. Hey, Samson. Good to see you today. So, um, yeah, using the, the rings with, with any kind of sound or any kind of device is phenomenal. And that includes crystals, too, because, you know, when you put a crystal or um, essential oils or whatever it is, that carries an energetic or a field of consciousness that we're working with, these amplify it. And where we see the real magic is where it is bringing in more of the consciousness of what it is that you're working with, whether it's the consciousness of the essential oil or the crystal, but yet still working with um, just energy patterns such as sound and light, super phenomenal. Um, you know, we played with red lasers a lot and we've always put rings around any of those laser devices too, just because you can feel it more. You can feel it, you know, with red lasers, you can feel it penetrate into, through the skin and into the body. But with the rings on it, it's like, you can feel it all the way through. So anyway, well, you don't have many questions here this morning. I hope everybody's not as... I don't even know how to describe myself this morning. Oh my goodness. It's just a good day to feels like winter season. And I feel like a kid on Christmas break right now. Ah, so thank goodness it's Friday. Um, and I guess if we don't have any more questions here, I don't have any more questions from the internet. Um, one of these times i would like to take everybody through that meditation that we're starting to do with our sessions um you know the sessions that i've been doing here over the past few weeks ever since well about the past month have been pretty phenomenal because we've been able to go deep into the old programming the old um, structures the mind and I've done a pretty good job at helping to talk those aspects of the person into releasing and letting go. But that's the thing. I still have a lot of friends who are, who will not go through this. Um, I've, I've taken a lot of people through this, um, this session that I call it and, um, and that are just friends. And, you know, there's a lot of people who just, don't want to let go of their story you know they say they do but when it comes down to it there is that aspect of them that for whatever reason still holds on to that story and you know basically everything is your energy your energy is here to serve you and if there is still something happening in your world and in your life that you're like wait no i don't want that 
there is still it is still serving you in some way so you are still choosing that experience there is no experience that happens to you that is outside of you there is no energy or experience outside of you so if there's something happening to you it is your experience your choosing your choice so that means that it is either serving you or else you're still enjoying that game and i know that's kind of where i was at for you know because i went through two years of the deep deep dark night of the soul dives and you know i just i was like holy shit, brenda help me out here what do i do and she's like you gotta let go and i'm like i'm not holding on to anything but yet i was holding on to everything i truly was and i there was a part of me that enjoyed the suffering, the having to do clearing work 24 seven. And that's it too, is after you start to step out of this whole chasm of old creation and you start to come into you as that master creator beings, your soul, it's like, um, you start to realize that even the clearing work that you do for yourself becomes a game. It's like, okay, what can I clear today? What lifetime and experience can I turn to wisdom? And it just becomes, you know, things that you do. And it, 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 it's just, it, it's a game that you keep playing. But you can simply choose, once you have that realization that that's still just a game, you can choose to step out of it. And that's where we've been at with our sessions is that, there's people, when I do the private sessions, there's people that still just want to hold on to the game. But there's a lot of people who you can tell because right away they just, they, they get there. They're just there. And they're not the ones that say, okay, I'm ready. I don't want to play this no more. They're just the ones that are like, they're, they're in full allowing. They're in full surrender. And so, you know, that's it's nice to be able to do those sessions and witness that because that brings me back to me and be like, okay, I can still be in full surrender a whole lot more than what I am. Um, and I still don't know what the secret to creation is, but I do know that um, I do realize some of the games that, that we as humans play. Um, anyway, um, Hey, we got a question. Yay. Thank you very much for listening to me ramble. Uh, Marie, do all the infinity figure eights carry the new energy no matter when they were created? That is really a good question. All of the infinities. Um, no, the, the infinite, the infinite heart, uh, the larger one the larger silver one, that one does carry the wisdom energetics and that's only been for just a few months. The other infinities right now are kind of a mismatch, mix match of energies right now in that at the time that those infinities were created, I simply stepped aside and just asked for whatever is in the highest and best to come through without, you know, putting it into any certain layers, frequencies, or boxes of golden fire or divine I am or the wisdom. I simply just stepped aside with those particular infinities and just said, okay, whatever's in the highest and best. And so there's, there's a few of the tools that I've actually done that with. The cell phone tabs are one that every time I twist the cell phone tabs, I simply step aside and ask for whatever serves in the highest and best that's available right now to come in and and as we all know everything is shifting and changing so fast um, that every day there's some something more available in consciousness as we keep expanding our own conscious awareness um, so there is a lot of the tools that i really am unsure of what the energetics truly are within them um, you know, like the cell phone tabs, those infinities. So one of these times, once everything starts to either level out or our trajectory stays stable, um, we really need to sit down and look at all the tools and rewrite their descriptions and their energetics. 
And so, you know, what we've always said when you look at the tools is look at the photo. Um, don't look at the name or look at the description. Just sit with the photo because the photo is going to bring through the, the, the newest energetic of that tool. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of work that we need to do on figuring out where the energetics are at with a lot of these tools and the infinity is one of them, but, um, really, truly, it's just whatever you're called to and whatever you end up getting is absolutely the perfect tool for you. So don't ever stress about, oh man, I got a golden fire and I should have got a wisdom because really the tools are starting to fluctuate more too, which has always been my vision. Well, over the past couple of years has been my vision is that the tools are very much um, changeable, that they're very much malleable in their fields and the energetics. This is my vision. And some of them are starting to come out this way. And I look forward to the day when we can create a single ring and every person is going to perceive it differently because the energetics of what they need is there. That's already happening right now is that like the divine I am has a certain bandwidth of energetics for the divine I am ring. And within that bandwidth of energetics, whoever holds the rings, whatever out of this bandwidth will come through the ring at any given moment for whatever it is that they need. But I'm talking about opening up all borders of everything from the harmony all the way to the wisdom and beyond. So that way it's, it's an open border bandwidth of potentials that's available in every ring. That's my vision. And I really feel we're going to get there. So at some point in time, you know, I think we're just going to have twisted sage tensor rings and then whatever is in your highest and best in any moment is going to be what's brought through there because that's part of these being a smart ring is, is that it is your consciousness, your soul, your light that determines what comes through every ring at any given moment for you. All we want, all I want to do is increase, increase the potentials that are available. Um, hey, Samson, curious about the infinity halo ring. What are the energies that are in that field? So the, the halos, whether you have the halo that has the infinity on it, or you just have the plain halo in copper or silver, these are the wisdom, but they are also bringing through the whole brain balancing. So the halos are, are different than just a regular wisdom ring and that the halos are helping to bring through that, that connection of the right and left hemisphere. It opens up the brain more. It brings that balance. Um, you know, as we as we start to step out of our old, you know, our old physical human body systems, the um, you know, as the light body comes in, as as our mind steps through into being basically remade, because our brain it's just like every lifetime where it just gets more complicated, and it's just it's um, it's an old, outdated system. And so as our light body comes in and as we amass more wisdom and consciousness, that wisdom and consciousness is not utilized by our processor unit here in our real, everything that's real with us is actually outside here. That's like when, so like when your body dies, you have a ghost wayward. It still is walking around with the same perceptions, feeling consciousness, memories, everything, because it is in the electromagnetic field. It's not in the processor, the brain. So um, the halos are helping with balancing that old brain and helping it to shift out of its grasp that it has on, on the physical being so that it can start to, to expand, to be more than it is to, to basically to let go of the old ways of control for the body. And, you know, and that's how I see that we're all going to be able to start shifting and changing our, our physical, our physical, um, you know, your, the healing, the everything else is because we're bringing on that light body 
and we are stepping out of the old processor unit. We're stepping more into our higher intelligence, if you will, our consciousness, our soul. Um, so the halos are helping with that brain imbalance because there's a large percentage of the human population starting since 2020 that, you know, that that imbalance of the brain um, has been going. And we can all say that humanity is flipping crazy right now. I think most of us can agree, even though each of us are crazy, too. Um, but there is an imbalance going on throughout humanity, and it's it's a good thing. Um, it's just getting us to the other side. And so the brain balancing we feel is, is an important part of that. And it's something that you don't need the physical tool. We, we actually did, we started doing this, gosh, about two years ago, maybe even four years ago, where basically after we did the sacred heart activation, we would move that energy to the throat and then to the pineal. We set the pineal on fire. And then we'd imagine that infinity going left and right, connecting both brains. And then we'd go to the quantum mind. So I know there's YouTubes out there on going to the quantum mind, that space beyond the mind. And that is basically the what we put into the halos was that whole concept of using the infinity after you activate the sacred heart, you set the pineal on fire. Then you witness those infinities going brain to brain or hemisphere to hemisphere, balances that. The infinity goes upwards to that higher mind, and then you step beyond the mind. So, um, yeah, look for that on, gosh, many of our YouTubes and also in the, the workshops that we have. Uh, JR, can I use the wisdom wand and balance the brain with it? You totally can. Um, so it's just, again, it's imagining those figure eights. And actually, um, well, I was going to say quick walk through a quick meditation, but... Um, I'm not really feeling the whole space here at the moment, but basically it's just, you know, if you're using your wisdom wand, all you're doing is using your imagination, visualization, and intention of creating those infinities that are opening up the brain hemispheres and connecting them through the pineal. So it's just a visualization and intention of connecting through the pineal, your left and right brain. And then again, you always do this from the heart space and then imagining it connecting in a figure eight to the higher mind, to the mind of the soul, if you will, um, to the higher heart. Well, yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of videos that we, we've walked through that process. Um, but yeah, I love the wisdom wand, you know, as I was doing that exercise, I could really feel that, um, which is pretty fantastic. So anyway, um, gosh, that's all the questions we have here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else cool that I know of. Um, yeah, I don't know. We um, getting closer to doing the uh, energy spa here, which I'm looking forward to. I uh, would really like to open this up. So I just need to be able to sit down and do the meditations for all five chambers. been kind of waiting because I'd like to be able to figure out how to do a meditation for like the sessions that I'm doing because man, these sessions are so flipping phenomenal far out there and it's, it just, it changes everything. And so I'd like to be able to do this generically to where um, a person can come and get into each chamber and have a meditation that basically covers everything generically in the meditation so that anybody could actually do it. And then once we have it set up here, then I'm going to do the video and use the meditations that we have for each of the five chambers here. And then do a video with all five of those meditations on one. So that way, um, you know, it does what we do in our sessions. So that's really where where my intentions are with this. Um, trying to think if there's anything else cool new coming out. Oh yeah, we have the one and a half inch Gaia spheres coming back. They are almost ready. They might be released this weekend. That's the the little ones with the triangular wire and silver and copper. They can make pendants. These are in the that um, <clears throat> they're in that. Um, earth alchemy energetics because we've taken that grounding ring with the Gaia sphere 
and connecting that also to that wisdom energetics. So basically you have that, that wisdom energetics in the Gaia sphere that is connecting with the earth. And so it's that one energetic that's in our newest set of rings um, that's both grounding and transformative. So that little Gaia sphere should be available here this weekend, which I'm pretty excited about. I know Lucas has spent the past couple of weeks putting those together because he's um, he, he's our he's our Gaia sphere guy. Um, oh gosh, Lucas does everything. But anyway, I was trying to think if there's anything else cool new coming out. Um, mm, I don't think so. Where like I say. We're still still kind of riding the shifts of energies right now. And it's going to be um, interesting to see where things are going. Uh, do you have any new tools since the radionics convention? No, actually, um, the last new thing that we put out was the, um, the Bader coil, which is one that we put out right during the radar, right during the radionics convention in Rapid City. So, um, like I say, we'll have that little Gaia sphere coming out. And otherwise, that's it for new tools right now. Um, and we're going to be cleaning up here sometime in January. Look for us having lots of clearance sales because we're going to get rid of a lot of the items that we just, that we don't feel to carry anymore. And we're going to start consolidating some things and figuring out what energetics we're, we're, we're working with. So anyway, January, things just start to shift and change for what we have available for tools. So anywho, I think that's probably it for today. Oh my goodness. We made it through in a half an hour today. It's our shortest 50 questions in a while. Um, yeah. Um, trying to think if there was anything else cool. Or anything cool to say besides, um, gosh, happy holidays. My daughter and I are going to go out and go to the National Forest and take the top off a tree and go sit on our table. Um, I like to top trees. That way they grow up and their tops grow multiples. Um, I was an arborist for a while, so I'd rather see a trimming of a tree versus taking down a whole tree. Um, let's see. So I guess that is it. And we will conclude today. Thank you guys for being here. Um, and yeah, and keep playing, keep playing in the energy and, um, you know, just everything is shifting so fast right now. And the more we can just be in the heart and just let things, let things flow. Um, it's, it's a lot easier when you can just stand behind the short wall, as some would say, where you're just, um, you know, you can see the world and it's craziness flying by, but it's like, man, that's on a different television set and I don't have to watch it. And um, it makes life a lot more wonderful when you're not glued to what's going on. So anyway, that's, that's my talk for today. Thank you guys for being here again, and we will see you soon. All right. Take care. Enjoy.